So mathematics is a language, and when you're speaking a language, you need to have all the words to speak it. Now, arguably, maths is also about numbers. And so what we're looking at today is the language, the words, to be able to talk about everything on this number line, from negative infinity to positive infinity over there. Now, there are numbers that don't sit on the number line, believe it or not, but that's a topic for another video. We're only interested in numbers that sit on the number line, and numbers that sit on the number line are called real numbers. See that R there with like the double lines? That's the symbol that we're going to use to denote any number that sits on the number line. Now we're going to put all of our numbers here in this box and we're also going to do a little something down there as well. Okay, so the real numbers can be broken up into different types of numbers. The first type of number we want to talk about is what's called the rational numbers. Q for rational. All right, what's a rational number? It can be expressed as P over Q. That explains why we use Q here, because Q stands for quotient, a number divided by another number. So what are some examples from our, um, from our number line? We have one over three, that is a quotient, it's a rational number, Q. We have uh, negative seven over six. We have, this will surprise you perhaps, negative 2.2. Now, negative 2.2 is not currently being expressed as a quotient, but it can be expressed as a quotient, which is why we call it a rational number, Q. All right, so, so far you need to remember what a double struck R looks like and what a double struck Q looks like and what they stand for. All right, what else do we have? Well, we have all the other stuff, the irrational numbers, which we're going to call Q dash. Okay, so these are the numbers that can't be expressed as a fraction. And you might be thinking, hang on, what do you mean can't be expressed as a as a fraction? What do we have? Well, we have root two. Now, this famously can't be expressed as a fraction. In fact, the uh, legend goes that Pythagoras, one of his pupils, tried to explain to him that root 2 couldn't be expressed as a fraction, and he threw him over a boat and he drowned. Um, another one, a famous one, is pi. Pi cannot be expressed as a fraction. So, these are irrational numbers. Perhaps unbelievably, there are an infinite number of rational numbers and there are an infinite number of irrational numbers, but there are more, way more irrational numbers than rational numbers. That said, for the rest of this video, we're going to be talking predominantly about rational numbers. Even though there's way more of these, we're more interested in these rational numbers. All right, so let's just change our picture a little bit. Way more irrational numbers, but I've got a big circle for um, my rational numbers here because I'm going to put a bunch of different numbers in there. Okay, what else do we have? We have the non-integer rationals. So every one of these that I've put up already, negative 2.2, negative 7 on 6, 1 on 3, they are non-integer rationals because they're not integers. So of course that brings us to the integers. We've got these ones right here. So look at our little diagram here. Look at our little diagram here. All integers are rational numbers. So what's an integer? Well we have two kinds of integers. We have negative integers, for example, negative 3. Now you might be looking at negative 3 and saying, wait, is that a rational number? Can that be expressed as P over Q? And yes, it can. Negative 3 over 1. That's a rational number. So negative 3 is a rational number. It is also an integer. It is a negative integer. And of course, we also have the natural numbers, which are the non-negative integers. Okay, so there's integers, there's negative integers, which sit in this little part of the circle here, but then we have this nice double struck N, which stands for the 
natural numbers, the counting numbers. Now we are going to break our counting numbers up into two as well. We're going to break them up into the real numbers Z plus. So the positive natural numbers. So for example, the number four, the number three, the number two, the number one. So what's left? What am I breaking this up into? I've got negative integers there. I've got positive integers there. Well, we've got kind of the mathematical star of the show, get their own little category all to themselves. And that is the number zero right here. So what do you need to take away from this? Well, first of all, you need to understand that what is happening here, what types of numbers we have, but then you also need to memorize a few of these little things. You need to know what a double struck R, Q, Z, N, Z plus, Z negative, or Q dash represent, right? Because when it comes to mathematical language, you're going to see these things written, all of these things written in various mathematical problems. And if you don't know what N stands for, if you don't know what Z plus stands for, you're not going to be able to read that mathematical sentence. And if you want to explain something to someone, you don't want to have to write the word out, you know, the real numbers out. You don't want to have to write out rational numbers. You want to be able to just write Q. Okay, that is the real number system.